Hello, white people. Yesterday I saw a video on YouTube about mirrors, demons, and portals. Ooh, it was kind of creepy because what it did was it, this person who made this video connected Hollywood movies about mirrors, portals, and demons all together. It was just so creepy. But they never, ever told us why that room was locked or why there were no mirrors in the whole house. Now we know. You see him in the mirrors. And then I'm reading through the comment section and I see somebody asking about, well, why is it that if you break a mirror, it's seven years of bad luck? Why seven years and why bad luck? So I looked that up and the only references I could really find was to Roman times and renewal of life or whatever. And, you know, all the things I read, you know, sometimes information on the internet can be very incestuous, like everybody's saying the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like you're in some sort of a incestual hell. But anyway, so I thought to myself, well, who creates this mo these movies? What tribe would be obsessed with portals, mirrors, and demons? And so I looked up uh, Talmud and portals and mirrors, and I came across information on what God's chosen people do when somebody dies. So... When somebody dies, they cover up the pictures and the mirrors because the mirrors might let in or the mirrors will let in demons. Anytime anybody dies, there are demons and evil spirits in the household. How about that? And then as I'm reading through, I come across something that says that the Talmud is only about 600 years old. I said, all right hold on here, is 600 years old? Really? It turns out that the Talmud was written after, way after the Bible, and even after Islam. <laughs> so my friends, what if Christianity came first, Islam came second, and Judaism came third? How about that? How is that going to put everything on its ear? And then also, as I'm looking through this, I come across Jude and Sal. Do you remember that video I made about Jude and Sal? How uh, these people were really upset and they wanted it removed? Well, a lot of the Jude and Sal has been removed and it used to be on churches. And it used to, people, and it was, it's a warning. It's a warning about the chosen, God's chosen we used to warn each other about God's chosen, but somehow we all were put to sleep. We've all been, you know, denied our own history because we must have lost some sort of a war. And everybody knows that the winners write history. And then further, look what else I found here. Uh, do you know how God's chosen people try to fool us and say, oh, they um, they believe in the Old Testament or the first five books and they call it the Torah? <laughs> well, actually, they don't. <laughs> That's a big lie. Uh, their book is called the Talmud. And here I am on a website called fathersmanifesto.net. And it says, like you, at one time, I believed that the essential difference between God's chosen and Christians was that God's chosen believed in the Old Testament and the Christians believed in the New Testament. The truth is that their real Bible is the Talmud. God's chosen people's book, the Mitzbich, states that there is nothing superior to Holy Talmud. While God's chosen profess to be attached to the Old Testament to the outside world, the real essence of the God's chosen people's creed is not the Old Testament as such. 
not the books of Moses, but the Talmud. There are several branches of God's chosen, such as Orthodox, Reform, Liberal, Conservative, Separatism, Ashkenazim, Zionist, etc., but they all use the Talmud in their synagogues, just as all different branches of Christians use the same Bible. The Talmud is made up of 63 books in 524 chapters and is often printed in 18 large volumes. It was written by rabbis between the years 200 AD and 500 AD. It basically contains all the God's chosen people's laws in their relationship between each other and also in relationship of the God's chosen people towards the Gentiles, which is us. Eight Catholic popes condemned the Talmud. Martin Luther, founder of the Protestant Church, ordered it burned. Pope Clement VIII declared the impious Talmudic, Kabbalistic, and other wicked books of God's chosen are hereby entirely condemned, and they must always remain condemned and prohibited, and this law must be perpetually observed. The Talmud holds that only God's chosen are true human beings, and that Gentiles are goyim, meaning cattle or beast. The following are shocking but exact quotes from the various books of the Talmud. Murdering goyim is like killing a wild animal. Even the best of the Gentiles should be killed. A goy, Gentile, who pries into the law, Talmud, is guilty of death. To communicate anything to a goy about our religious relations would be equal to killing all of God's chosen. For if the goyim knew what we teach about them, they would kill us openly. If a God's chosen be called upon to explain any part of the rabbinic books, he ought to give only a false explanation. Whoever will violate this order shall be put to death. Sexual intercourse with a little girl is permitted if she is three years of age. God's chosen may swear falsely by use of subterfuge wording. Do not save goyim in danger of death. Show no mercy to the goyim. If it can be proven that someone has given the money of Israelites to the goyim, way must be found after prudent consideration to wipe him off the face of the earth. A chosen may keep anything he finds which belongs to the Akim, Gentile. For he who returns lost property to Gentiles sins against the law by increasing the power of the transgressors of the law. It is praiseworthy, however, to return lost property if it is done to honor the name of God, namely, if by so doing Christians will praise God's chosen and look upon them as honorable people. A God's chosen knight should and must make a false oath when the goyim asks if our books contain anything against them. God's chosen are human beings, but the nations of the world are not human beings, but beasts. When the Messiah comes, every chosen knight will have 2,800 slaves. Jehovah created the non-chosen knight in human form so that the chosen knight would not have to be served by beasts. The non-chosenite is consequently an animal in human form and condemned to serve the chosenite day and night. A Gentile girl who is three years old can be violated. A chosenite may violate but not marry a non-chosenite girl. If a goy kills a goy or a chosenite, he is responsible, but if a Chosen knight kills a goy, he is not responsible. It is permitted to kill a chosen knight denouncer everywhere. It is permitted to kill him before he denounces. All property of other nations belongs to the chosen knight nation, which consequently is entitled to seize upon it without any scruples. How to interpret the word robbery? A goy is forbidden to steal rob or take women's slaves, etc., from a goy or from a chosenite. But a chosenite is not forbidden to do all of this to a goy. God has given the chosenites power over the possessions and blood of all nations. When a chosenite has a Gentile in his clutches, another chosenite may go to the same 
Gentile, lend him money, and in turn deceive him, so that the Gentile shall be ruined. For the property of a Gentile, according to our law, belongs to no one, and the first chosen knight that passes has full right to seize it. A chosen knight is forbidden to drink from a glass of wine which a Gentile has touched, because the touch has made the wine unclean. He who desires that none of his vows made during the year be valid, let him stand at the beginning of the year and declare, Every vow which I may make in the future shall be null. His vows are then invalid. We could provide many more quotes from this offensive book, but I believe that the point is clear. The Chosenites are involved in what we in what can be called, and indeed has been called, a conspiracy against all mankind, and will take whatever steps they deem necessary for them to do- dominate the rest of the world. It is because of these beliefs and the willingness of the Chosenites to act upon them that anti-Semitism exists, and perhaps the reason why the Chosenites have been disliked and driven out of every nation in which they have inhabited at least once. In the pages that follow, I hope to make clear to you just how far the Chosenites have gotten with this Talmudic conspiracy. All right, white people, that's the damage for now. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your thoughts below.